Today's a big day, and we have lots of important, very important decisions we have to make that are gonna directly affect you. The ones out there that actually watch the Fan Showdown, you're gonna wanna pay attention because I need your guys' opinion. I need your help to figure out what we're gonna do next. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. You need a password for everything. Most of the time you're required to update those passwords or change them regularly, and it can be a pain to try to remember what site uses what password. Well, good news, NordPass is here to make that struggle a thing of the past. NordPass can store all your passwords in one place, organize your logins and private notes in a secure password vault. This means you only need to remember one master password to gain access to all your information. NordPass can also make shopping online easier by remembering all of your credit card information. And on top of that, NordPass has a powerful autofill feature, so there's no need to scroll through hundreds and hundreds of passwords to find the one you need for whatever site you're on. NordPass will automatically fill it in for you. NordPass can also help you break that habit we all sometimes have of using multiple, or using the same password in multiple sites over and over again, which we all know is a bad idea, yet we still do it. The more complex the password is, the safer your account is, and NordPass can be used to create passwords for you, and then it also can remember them for you, so win-win. Most importantly, NordPass is zero-knowledge architecture. Your data is encrypted on your device before it ever reaches their servers for backup and sync. Keep all your passwords secure and safe with NordPass. Click the link in the description below to get the special cyber deal. 70% off a two year plan plus one additional month for free for only $1.50 a month. So about the fan showdown. As you know, season two is right around the corner, probably like next video. And rather than doing water cooling uh, again this time around, we're gonna try air cooling. And to do that, we need to pick a high performance air cooler for the new test bench. And yes, we're gonna go test bench. I know I said I wanna do case, but a lot of you guys made very, very uh, solid uh, arguments against that. For one, once we have another tulip, we can't put a tulip in a case, it's just not gonna fit. And rather than stifle creativity, we're gonna put it back on the test bench. We can always go case somewhere down the line, but for now, season two, air cooler on uh, the test bench, it's gonna be a good time. Now, speaking of air coolers and one possible solution, let's talk about the star of the show. This is Deep Cool's new AS500. And it's a brand new air cooler that's gonna be launching later this month. It might be out already, but it's aimed directly at the NHU-12A and U-14S. The MSRP for the AS500 is gonna be $59.99, making it almost $40 cheaper than the U-12A, uh, and around, I think, $4 cheaper than the U-14S, uh, at least as a writing of this little review, things could possibly change. The AS500 is a thin single tower air cooler, which I personally like. Um, it kind of guarantees that you're not gonna have any interferences with your RAM, which is always an issue that you need to watch out for when picking a humongous air cooler. Also, if you go really big on air coolers and you have some of that fancy, nice RGB RAM like I like to use, uh, if your air cooler is too big, you just you just can't see it. And that's, that's just a bummer. But with a thin a little thin boy tower like this, you're gonna be good. Now through this thin boy air cooler runs five six millimeter heat pipes down to a solid copper base. And at the top of the fin stack is a bit of aesthetic styling that I think Deep Cool straight up nailed with this air cooler. Covering the heat pipe ends is a matte black plastic cover. And the reason that I like this one so much is that it just looks clean. There's no loud crazy logos ruining your build or being the wrong way up and you can't change it. And the RGB implementation is literally spot on. Around the lower edge of the cover is where the RGB emanates from, which gives the cooler a nice glow without being, you know, too loud or over the top. Also, if you're one of those tens to hundreds of people that uh, don't like RGB, uh, you can turn it off and you're not really going to notice it like you will on other coolers. It's just going to look like a black standard air cooler, nice stealth build. Now with this cooler, you do get one TF140S 140mm fan. Uh, now I should say there is um, an AS500 plus version of this air cooler, which essentially is the same air cooler, but you get two fans for a push-pull configuration. But with this one, the one that I got, uh, the AS, the standard AS500, you only get one fan. You do get clips to add another fan if you want to, but uh, just one for now. The TF140S has an RPM range of about 500 to 1200 and a rated CFM output of 70.81 and a claimed uh, maximum noise output of 26 dBA. And my favorite feature of the 140S uh, is the bit of styling thrown in. Each blade has its own little spoiler built on the trailing edge, kind of something you'd probably see in the, in the fan showdown, but I don't know if it does anything, uh, to be honest with you, but it does look sweet. But all that, you know, is numbers on a sheet, a sheet of paper. Is this cooler really any good? Is it good, is it good enough to be the test bench for the fan showdown season two? 
it's, that's a big deal, and that's gonna take one beefy cooler. Well, in order to find that out, I got some other air coolers to test against it. One of the first ones that's obviously gotta be considered is this guy. This is the NHU-12A, and being that the AS500 is literally aimed at this one, uh, we had to test this one. Also, do you remember last season, we literally, the, the goal was to outperform the A, you know, the A12X25, and uh, this one comes with two, so. Other than this one, we do have this guy from Scythe. This is the Scythe Ninja 5, and the reason I picked this one uh, is because one, I've always had a, I've always been kind of a fan of Scythe air coolers. They always are priced very competitively. They always look decent. They always got these nice coverings on the top and they perform well. So, but other than that, the AS500 is $59.99 and the Ninja 5 is also $59.99. Now you do lose ARGB if you go with the Ninja 5, which is always a performance drop in my opinion. But yeah, what, what are you gonna do? And lastly, we got Big Haas. This is the Corsair A500, and the reason I wanted to check out this big boy is because, well, Corsair is a very well-known brand, and they have tons and tons of products, yet they only have one air cooler, and that's this one. Now, normally this air cooler is priced about the same as the u 12 8 about $99.99, but uh, actually, while I was writing this, I did notice that you could pick this beast up for $64.99, which is actually a pretty good deal given you know, how humongous it is. How could it not do a good job cooling when it's literally this big? Now the specs of the system I'll be using is the CPU is an AMD 3700X. Motherboard, I'll be using an Azeroc X570 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. RAM is 16 gigs of Team Group T-Force Nighthawk RGB running at 3600 megahertz. And the graphics card, although we're not gonna do any graphics stuff, is the Red Devil 5700 XT. And I'm putting all this inside of an Antec uh, DP501 case. Uh, currently, the system's all set up to be all white. It actually looks pretty good. I did like that build a lot. Uh, we're going to see how it does now with some air coolers because I still have the stock one in there, which we'll, we'll throw into the mix just to see how it, you know, performs. And uh, I will say, right out of the gate, problems. Uh, with the exception of one air cooler, this one, none of these ones fit inside that, uh, that case. So that's always something you got to pay attention to. If you're doing a build and you want to go with a big old air cooler that you got to make sure you pick a case that it's going to fit inside. Now, if you were going to go with the, you know, the A12 or the U12A, you'd be good. But if you went with one of these guys, you'd be a sad one. The big thing for me is that team group RAM that I'm using is uh, pretty, pretty tall. So you have to push up the front fan on most of these coolers. I guess you could swap this one to the backside and you might be all right. I wanted to run them all inside the case, but since I couldn't, um, I ran them all with the side panel off, so just know that. The stress test that I chose is a standard IDA 64, kind of what we'll be running in the fan showdown. 15 minutes, which gave it enough time to, to equalize temperature on the air coolers, which is awesome because when you do water cooling, you gotta run it a lot longer. Uh, so that was a, a bonus for me. And then also during that test, I not only looked at the temperature that the CPU finished at, the average temperature during the run, I also looked at what was the max average frequency or the average frequency that the CPU processor, the 3700X was able to reach during that run. So not only do I wanna see how well the coolers performed, I wanna see how well were they able to let the, uh, the AMD chip run. And I ran the stress test with the CPU in the precision boost overdrive mode with the creator mode on. Uh, and it was very interesting because not only are you looking for best cooling performance, you're also looking for what's gonna make your AMD chip perform very good because who's not? Who doesn't have AMD nowadays, really? And the best thing about AMD is that it's very temperature dependent. The better your air cooler, the better performance you're gonna get. And that is always very awesome. And then speaking of the fan showdown, uh, a lot of you guys said we probably shouldn't go with AMD because of that. And given we're not gonna lock frequency, so we'll use the 7700K locked at its standard overclock. But so how did each one of these bad boys end up doing? Well, the uh, AS500 from Deepcool finished with an average temperature of 80.7 degrees Celsius with a room temperature of 21.5, getting a delta of 59.2. And the clock speed during that run was 4,115 megahertz. The Corsair, the big boy, the A500 finished with an average temperature of 78.3 at a room temperature of 21.1, giving it a delta of 57.2. And the clock speed on that guy was 4,128 megahertz. The Scythe, the Ninja 5, the same price point as the AS500, finished the test with an average temperature of 82.5 degrees Celsius at a room temperature of 21.5 again, giving it a delta of 61 on the nose and a clock speed of 4100 megahertz. And finally, we got the Noctua NHU12A, which finished with an average temperature of 79.1 at a room temperature of 21.9 this time around, giving it a delta of 57.2 
and a clock speed of 4134 megahertz. So strictly speaking, if we're going to talk about performance only, the winner would be the Noctua U12A, only because it's squeaked out, you know, just a little bit more, you know, clock speed uh, than the than the the or well, the Corsair A500. However, the best the best choice for me uh, is a bit more complicated than that. For one, when you're looking at an air cooler, one of the big things about air coolers is how loud are they. So I did take a noise reading of all these coolers while they were running the test at 50 centimeters, and that was obviously with the side panel off uh, during the stress test run. And this is where you can see the Corsair's performance, where it actually gets all that performance. These fans are running very fast. And while running the test, it actually scored a higher dB reading than the stock AMD Prism cooler that uh, I ran first. And if you know anything about the stock AMD cooler, nowhere near quiet. So that means the U12A pulls ahead of the Corsair A500 not only in performance, but also being quieter while doing it, which is very, it's very impressive, regardless of how you, how you shake it. But if you're like me, when you're building a new PC, you're doing so on a budget. And the A500 and the U12A are normally pretty pricey at about $100. And that's a hard pill to swallow when you're trying to stretch every last cent to get the most performance out of whatever you're building. So knowing that, I'm gonna actually give two recommendations for these air coolers. If you uh, are going for performance, that's like all that matters. You, you're not limited on how much you can spend on, an air, on a cooler and you definitely wanna go with air cooling. The U12A is literally the cooler you wanna go with. The A500, in my opinion, it's just too humongous. It covers up your RAM, it's kinda of in the way and it is super loud. And that's just a deal breaker for myself. Now, if you're like me though, and you're building your new PC on a budget, the AS500 is a very good air cooler to choose in my opinion. And I would actually pick this one, the AS500 over the Ninja, only because the Ninja is so much bigger. And I say that because if, for me, I have the T-Force RGB RAM. And if you spend the money on RGB RAM, you probably wanna see it. And a cooler this size, you're gonna be able, you're gonna be limiting how much you can see of the RAM. So with a small thin boy cooler, you're gonna see more of your build. Uh, and also you don't get the RGB on this version of the Ninja 5 and the implementation of this RGB spot on for what I like to see. It's not over the top, it's there. You can turn it off, you wanna just go all black and it's not obvious that there's a big giant part of the air cooler that's not lit up. And I just really like it and it's not very loud and it's kinda of right where it needs to be for an air cooler. Now I will leave links to all this stuff down below, also that stuff for that build over there if you wanna get your hands on some of those PC parts. Now we got a big decision to make. Which one of these air coolers are we gonna use for season two of the Fan Showdown? The one I'm leaning towards is the U12A uh, for season two. Uh, one, because it scored the best out of all these air coolers. So therefore we got the, we got the best performance possibility. However, also the fan that it uses is the A12X25, which is the fan that we've been aiming at the whole time. But you know, the, the Fan Showdown is as much about you guys as it is anybody. So I'm going to put a poll on my community tab right now for each of you guys to go there and take a vote on which cooler you want to see used in season two. Uh, maybe if you don't want to see any of these, you just leave a comment with a cooler that maybe you think would be better. And I'm going to check that poll out and we're going to choose one of these air coolers from that poll to be our test bench for season two. And it's going to be sweet. I'm pretty pumped. I already have four new fans picked and I'm ready to start printing right now. Till next time. Peace.